This is a teleporter. And so is this. And so is this. Whether you're in a sci-fi or fantasy setting has a big impact on exactly how teleportation works and the scenarios around it. This video is about fantasy teleportation, and more importantly its effect on a standard set-piece battle. So what if it existed? First, there are some distinctions. Non-technological teleportation can still be split up several ways. Flashy versus stealthy, single person versus multi-person, precise versus all over the place, self-based versus portal-based, only places you've already been versus only places you can see versus the elusive literally anywhere, which I'm sure everyone's thought of, but I can never remember seeing done, and of course magic's ever-present, inherent versus learnable, and whether that inherent is for the many or the few. To eliminate some of these quickly, flashy teleportation can generally be assumed not to be flashier than the ongoing battle, so we'll ignore it. Inaccurate teleportation may be useful, but it either leads to scenarios where the teleportation wouldn't be used, or the same ones I'm going to describe, but with more running. Uh, self versus portal based, and single person versus multi person can be merged into one, as they both concern how fast and numerous teleportation can be, and virtually every form of magical teleportation includes going anywhere within sight, which is all that really matters for the battles themselves. Finally, in battle, how people got their teleportation doesn't really matter very much. What matters is how many there are on each side. So let's jump into it. This is a set piece description of the Battle of Zama. I chose it not because Hannibal tried to outcool marching elephants over the Alps with teleportation, but because the Romans have some extra cavalry and the Carthaginians have some elephants. I don't particularly care for troop numbers and technological level here, because I'll just generally be talking about all pre-modern battles. Also, to clear things up, these are infantry, these are cavalry, and these are elephants, which I've styled like tanks because, believe it or not, NATO's joint military symbology doesn't have a symbol for elephants. So let's give our boy Scipio some teleporters. Now, in general, both the number of available teleporters and the number of people they can teleport can be combined to make a general count of how many soldiers can be teleported within a set time. Obviously, both tiny-scale teleportation, sending only a few people, and massive scale enough to send the entire army matter too, but for now, let's just say the Roman teleporters can teleport a single unit on this screen. For now, we'll assume only the Romans know about teleporters and iterate along from there. So what would a general do in this kind of situation? Well, almost certainly something like this. Hammer and anvil teleporting cavalry attack. In virtually any battle throughout history, an unexpected cavalry charge to the rear is one of the single greatest moves to pull off. The cavalry charge into the unsuspecting backs of the Carthaginian soldiers would carve through their ranks like a hot knife through butter. In this particular example, the Carthaginian veterans were on the rear, but that's unlikely to prevent large numbers of troops from routing, leading to even more following and the entire army falling apart. All I really have to add here is that the Romans would probably do best if they sent the extra cavalry they had to try and lead off the Carthaginian cavalry, probably with the old tried and tested pretend to run away then get them to give chase, as well as engaging their main force so when the teleporting cavalry arrived, the Carthaginians would have no real backup, would feel surrounded, and would rout even faster. So we'll reset the battle. Now Hannibal knows about the magical teleporting cavalry. So how would an army try and defend against a move like this? Well, for cavalry specifically, the first move would be to make sure every troop, and especially the ones on the edges of the army, has a spear of some kind. Contrary to popular belief, this wouldn't be particularly difficult, as armies had a lot less swords than you generally see in movies, and even with large numbers of swords, the Romans, for example, still generally carried javelins to hurl at the enemy, which could double as spears. Needless to say, a cavalry charge into a wall of spears would be less good, and all their soldiers would be ordered to point the spears outwards at all times unless they were within melee range of the enemy army. So back to the drawing board. Scipio has teleporters, Hannibal knows he has teleporters, and Scipio knows he knows he has teleporters. This is slowly getting closer to the battle tactics of a world with normalised teleportation. So what does Scipio do? Obviously, initial cavalry charges are out, but surrounding the army is also always a good thing. The efficiency of a surrounded army varies on the discipline of the surrounded, how scared and tired they are, and various other things. In this scenario, Scipio would be able to make the troop manoeuvres he wants basically uncontested, as he has teleporters. So would he teleport his troops around to surround the Carthaginians? Maybe he'd send them in the back to have armies on either side. But there's one major block for them teleporting to the front. So let's talk about elephants. 
War elephants were the tanks of the past, far slower than a cavalry charge, but with a sheer size and appearance that could send a front line flying, literally in some cases. And this is doubly so if the soldiers aren't used to them, not even mentioning their additional use as a platform for shooting arrows and even putting forms of ballista on. But they're also like shooting a shark in a barrel when it comes to teleporting them away. Obviously it depends on the specifics of the type of teleportation, but whether it's some guy teleporting in and out with the elephant or just conjuring a portal under it straight to the Mediterranean, most forms of teleportation would make short work of any kind of megafauna or artillery on the battlefield, and that's including all your standard trebuchet and siege equipment, not that would really be needed in a world where you can just teleport troops onto the city wall. So back to the battle, sans elephants as they'd now be transported to the bottom of the near lake, though they won't be gone for long. In general, these kinds of battles, and especially ones with interesting terrain, would be preceded by weeks or even months of subtle manoeuvres to try and gain some kind of minor advantage for when the battle actually begins, but with teleportation these manoeuvres would be anything but subtle, and the tactical differences made would be overwhelming. Now, the scenario here is a bit one-sided. The Romans have teleporters, and the Carthaginians don't, and we'll rectify this in a minute. But since it's still a relevant scenario, how could a general react to the enemy being able to teleport around them without being able to teleport back? I can see a few strategies here, although this is a lot more speculative than most of the other stuff. If in a battle the non-teleporting army has a strategically advantageous piece of land, like up a hill, with decent numbers of supplies and additional allies who might arrive, they could just sit tight as they're surrounded, which sounds very specific but isn't particularly uncommon, just look at the Battle of Alesia. Although that conflict didn't go particularly well for the hill-sitting army, and in this scenario Caesar's forces would have been able to teleport out, so who knows. You could also place large numbers of cavalry around your army to charge into the blocks of teleporters coming in, although this could be mitigated by the teleporting army sending in new soldiers soldiers in some kind of defensive square formation with spears pointing outwards to stop the charge. Alternatively, if the non-teleporters have a numerically greater force, they might just engage immediately, since a fighting group of soldiers would be hard pressed to organise to teleport. Some troops would probably end up behind them, but an army would probably be prepared for this and not panic too much, uh, though the army would need to send extra forces to the areas being attacked from both sides to avoid the army getting cut in half. All of that said, in general this kind of scenario would be rare and mainly happen if teleportation is species specific, or perhaps in a peasant's revolt. So both armies can teleport now. This makes manoeuvring a two-sided thing. First, the obvious. If there's one area of clearly tactically advantageous land, both armies will be able to contest it via teleportation. The main difficulty for the armies here is the risk of starting a battle early. For example, say both armies want to be on the hill, so both send in a group of troops who appear right next to each other and start fighting. Then more troops start arriving and the whole thing turns into an uncontrolled free-for-all on the hill. Armies would likely be trained to stop this kind of thing, however, with most competent generals teleporting in with their first waves of troops to assess the situation. That said, even if there is a good patch of land to start the invasion, the troops might instead opt to use the next strategy, just teleporting to try and surround the enemy, with the enemy doing the same thing at the same time. No doubt this will be complicated to the extent I'm not even going to try and speculate further on it. Instead, we'll go back to the elephants. Before they were pretty vulnerable, but now, if they have a teleporter assigned to them, you get the wonders of a magically teleporting elephant. Now, this sounds a bit silly, but it's really not. Remember the main problem with teleporting cavalry charges, that it's easy to counter? Well, you know what's not easy to counter? A sudden unexpected elephant charge into your lines. And elephants can't easily be stopped by spearmen. More so, you don't even need that many elephants to pull this off, just one or two is enough to crush an area of the enemy's lines enough to send in ordinary cavalry. This mitigates the largest problem with war elephants too, they've generally been found to be skittish and easily alarmed by unfamiliar sounds, causing them to flee, like in the Battle of Zama, this is exactly what Scipio used, both organising his troops with large gaps for the elephants to charge through, and telling his cavalry to blow loud horns to scare them. But none of this would actually help here, because the Carthaginian army could just take the elephants round the back, get them into a sprint, and once they reach full speed, just teleport them straight in front of the Roman army. This would be more dangerous for the health of the elephants, since they have less time to prepare, but who do you think it's going to hurt more? But moving on to sieges, I'm not going to talk about them. 
The reason for this is that, long story short, all teleporting in Sieges does is skip the Siege part and get straight to the fighting within the city part, which I just don't know enough to talk about. I guess the defending army will probably be a bit better off as they know their way around the city, whereas teleportation would be virtually useless for the attacking army apart from getting to the strategic locations faster. Royal families and the like would also be far quicker to flee as armies could just teleport into the palace, and in worlds where virtually every army has large numbers of teleporters, city walls might just not exist, a bit like how they don't nowadays since the invention of the cannon. For that matter, armies would have to be way more cautious about enemies teleporting into their camp. Okay, I did talk about sieges, but moving on to the next thing. One strategy I haven't brought up is teleporting into the enemy army, like right into. This is because it's a pretty terrible idea, which would immediately turn into an uncontrolled free-for-all, basically just what movies would lead you to believe battles are like where shield walls don't exist, you're constantly surrounded by both allies and enemies, and you can stop for a quick chat or to dramatically stare at something without getting stabbed. While in general it's a bad idea, if you have an unorganised band of berserker-style troops versus an army that's used to highly disciplined shield wall-style conflict, it might just give you a fighting chance. Basically, if the fantasy Romans fight the fantasy Vikings, you might want to do this. Now to avoid tripling the length of this video, we're going to try and get through small-scale teleportation quickly. Maybe most armies can only send through a few people. This could be used for assassinations, as well as spying, and the freeing of captives. Security around the generals would probably be enhanced, but I'm not going to go into detail about teleporting espionage here. Finally, entire army teleportation where every single member of the army can teleport away from the fighting. So to get the basics out of the way, the first important thing to remember is that humans, at least in this video, aren't a hive mind, so organising a troop teleportation would take... organisation. For the former cases, I've always just sort of assumed the teleporters can get it right, but to flesh that out a bit, armies would likely need some kind of signalling techniques, the standard ones being drums, trumpets and flags. Obviously these techniques are only as effective as the people looking out for them. So after teleporting somewhere, it could be harder to communicate with the main bulk of the army, although this could be mitigated by, well, by people teleporting to and forth to exchange orders. Anyway, if entire armies can teleport, retreating becomes way easier and way safer. Now, on the one hand, this does make battles a little easier to win, as people will flee easier, but this could also be to the extent that generals would repeatedly teleport away to reorganise if they think a battle starting is even slightly in the enemy's favour, and guerrilla warfare would be insane in this world, as guerrillas can basically do whatever they want then just teleport away, although that gets more into teleportation and crime, which I'm not covering here. And of course, this means invasions are way, way faster. Even if an army can only teleport to areas they can see, invasions would go ridiculously fast, to the extent that any country at risk of invasion would need to keep a standing army at all times, because the medieval standard of gathering peasants to fight just wouldn't be fast enough to stop an invasion. But we're getting off the battlefield here, so I'm going to wrap up. Uh, if you've watched to the end of this video, you're a pretty cool person. Here, have a picture of some kind of cute animal. Thank you, and good night.